Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today I'm here with Justin Jeffers, the man behind Fine Young Gentleman and the shoe brand J Butler. In today's video, we're going to discuss how you can wear and combine loafers with items in your wardrobe and also talk about what events they're appropriate for when you should not wear them. And if you want to learn more about the history and everything that goes into loafers, please check out our in-depth loafer guide here. Justin, Raphael. thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me. It's we're a pleasure. A great time in LA at the Art of Charm headquarters. Yes, it is. And uh, what a bunch of loafers with you. We had a good conversation about them and you told me more about the details of mm -hmm. them. And you also had some good ideas of how to wear them. Yes. So I think most people associate a spring summer style yeah. with a loafer. What do you think would be good outfits to combine it to? Okay. Well, first, thank you for having me, Raphael. It's a pleasure. Um, been a big fan of the blog for a long time. Awesome. Um, so I, I think loafers to me are perhaps the most flexible type of shoe you can wear. More than a sneaker, more than a boot, more than a lace-up. You can easily dress them down or you can easily dress them up. I mean, you can really wear a loafer with a tuxedo if that's your style, a bit loafer, for instance. You can wear it with a suit, a double-breasted suit, a single-breasted suit. You can wear it with a bathing suit. It, they really can cover the full gamut of style. Yeah. Um, so I brought a bunch of looks here today and a couple pairs of shoes that we can talk about. And, and like you said, we can go over what situations you wear them in and also um, you know, different combinations. You know, how are you going to dress a loafer down and how are you going to dress it up? Absolutely. Um, so I think the first look, let's start with uh, a more casual look. Um, I'm a big fan of wearing blue. My, my hair and my eyes are dark brown, so blue works really well for me. Um, so this look here, you'll see. But I mean, that being said, blue works for many men. And yes. It's a wardrobe staple because of that. 100%. So it's something most men can wear. 100%. So in this look here, we have a, a pair of blue. It's a kind of an Air Force blue seersucker pant, which you could easily swap out for a pair of navy chinos or maybe a cobalt blue um, you know, chinos. A uh, light blue button-down shirt and a pair of brown penny loafers. Um, the brown penny loafer is the most... Uh, practical, the most wearable penny loafer of all loafers, really. It's any guy, every guy should have one in his wardrobe. Um, it is. I agree with you on that one. And yeah. We talk about a loafer guide. And I think one thing that, that you do that's great, you also offer the matching belt. Yes. So yeah. people can kind of combine that, pull out that look. Yeah. Both, both at Jay Baller and Fine Young Gentleman, I get a lot of questions on A, what color pants should I wear with what color shoe? And B, what color belt should I wear with what color shoe? I'm of the school of thought, and you may agree or disagree, but I think that uh, to the extent you can, you should match the color of your belt with the color of your shoes. Unless you have a casual outfit, I think sometimes you know you can have like a madras belt or a yeah. fabric belt. Or like a needlepoint belt, exactly. something like that. Or a silk tie, like Fred Astaire would, would wear it, for Yes, so. uh, and, and as a backup, if you can't match your belt to the upper uh, of the shoe, um, you can match it to the sole color. Um, so for instance, we have a, a navy blue suede shoe. And I think uh, if you can't wear a navy suede belt or you don't want to, a brown suede or a dark brown belt that matches the dark brown of the sole works very well. Works well. All yeah. right. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so, Raphael, in this next look here, we base the look around a pair of brown suede bit loafers. Uh, for us, that's the Millbank bit loafer. Um, we did a really simple, really casual outfit. You may wear it to brunch on the weekend or maybe out to a date on you know, Wednesday night. We took a pair of tan chinos with a, a green polo shirt. Um, very dark simple, green, yeah. Dark green, green, racing green. Yeah, very simple outfit, um, very casual. Um, you know, if you really wanted, you could throw a jacket on over it. You know, a vest if it's cold out. Um, and then we paired a, a suede belt to go with it, and uh, as you'll see, a watch and um, sunglasses to go with it. Yeah, personally, I also think it would look great with an olive green one. Maybe don't wear a red polo, otherwise you look like a Christmas target tree. employee. Yeah, or target employee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next look we have here is is probably the most casual look we'll discuss today, and that's a bathing suit. Um, you know, some guys don't want to wear flip flops. It's they a don't... bold bathing suit too. It is a bold bathing suit. It's a great bathing suit though. It's from Roller Bar Brown. Um, you know, some guys do not want to wear flip flops to the beach, um, and I get that. They you know they don't want to have their toes showing, and uh, you know I think a loafer or even a, a, an espadrille is a great option for that. Well, it could be a resort town or you know where it's warm, yeah. and tropical. You're not always on the sand. Exactly. Sometimes I find when you are on sand, you know, and you get the sand in the shoe, yeah. it's not the most comfortable thing. No, it's not. No, it's not. Um, so we, we paired uh, the caramel, you know, our caramel penny loafer with this bathing suit. Uh, for me, um, the reason I chose the caramel is because I thought the caramel paired well with the yellow of the surfboards in the bathing suit. So, you know, if you're not wearing a shirt, you know, basically wearing a bathing suit, 
um, I think it's wise to look for colors in that bathing suit that you can either match or that you can complement. Yeah. I mean, caramel or tan are just great colors yes. for in the summer, a little lighter, yes. a little less formal. But you can still wear them with a dark pair of chinos yeah. or something in Nantucket red, for example, yes. or regular seersuckers, no problem. Yes, yes. And then All the right. te tequila is for obvious reasons. Another really casual summer look uh, is uh, shorts. Um, you know, you can wear them with a longer short. In this case, we have a, a shorter short. Um, they're actually chubbies. What do you mean by shorter inseam length? So these shorts, I believe, have five inch inseam. Most, most shorts you see are short. seven to nine inch inseam. Yeah. For most guys, I think anything more than nine inches is too long. You know, once you you don't really want to cover your knees. No. Um, it, has a it cuts off your legs. Look, yeah. Of, it's not very contagious. Yeah, it does not flatter many guys. Oh, um, so what do you got here. So it's very casual. Again, we have the brown penny loafer with a brown belt to match it. Um, the dark brown, I think, really grounds the red of the shirt and the blue of, of the gingham in, in the shirt. Um, exactly. I already have a bold choice. So you yeah, tone, tone it down, it down a little shoes. bit. You know, you could easily swap out the bit loafer here or even the tie loafer. Um, you know, we went with the penny loafer again to kind of subdue the outfit a little bit. So about the shirt, short sleeve shirt, long sleeve shirt? In this case, it's a long sleeve shirt. Um, I'm, I'm personally, my style is I don't wear short sleeve, you know, button up shirts. Um, so all my shirts are long sleeve. I'm with you. I like if I want that look, I just go with a polo shirt yeah. that's short sleeved or I have a regular shirt. And you can always yeah. kind of roll up the shirt sleeves. Yeah, which is a great look. Very casual, kind of I'm off duty, I'm relaxing type of look. So let's talk about a couple more dressy looks. Right. Um, the first one we'll have here is just your classic navy suit. Every guy probably has one in his closet. So a lot of questions uh, that are directed towards me, both again in the blog and also at Jay Butler are, can I wear these loafers with a suit? Yeah. Generally speaking, I tell guys um, the tie loafer and the penny loafer are not quite formal enough to go with a formal suit such as this navy blue one here. A more casual suit, let's say a seersucker suit or a you know, linen suit or even a blazer or a sports jacket, any of the shoes will go well with. And that, that goes not just with our loafers we have here today, um, but with a more formal penny loafer, uh, even with a, a driving shoe, um, you know, and even with an espadrille. Okay. Um, you know, especially in, in the warmer months. Um, but what we have here is uh, what I deem to be the most formal of our loafers is, is the bit loafer. Um, the dark brown goes really well with the navy blue, dark brown being a little more formal than the caramel, but you could easily wear a caramel bit loafer with the navy blue suit or even a black bit loafer. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And also, it always depends on, on how you do it, right? If it's like your most formal interview, let's say if you're in Italy, or if you have a lighter shade of navy, uh, maybe if you uh, skip the socks all together yes. or you have no show socks yes. or some like inserts it's a different look right? yeah. it depends yeah. on what the purpose what, what the is. setting is exactly and and who who is your audience if you want to think about you know who you're speaking to who you're communicating to with your clothes you know you can change up kind of the accessories and, and the small details of, yeah. of your outfit so with the suit would you wear socks with your loafers or would you skip? Typically, yes. Um, especially if you're going into a more formal office environment. Uh, you know, if you're going into a bank or an accounting firm or a law office, yeah. yes. You went over to calf socks anyways. Yes, especially. Especially. Especially ones from Fort Belvedere. <laughs> um, and, and I think many times with loafers, you want to wear a thinner sock. Um, loafers, the fit of loafers is different than lace-ups because you don't have the laces to tighten or loosen the shoe. Um, so if you're used to wearing a loafer without a sock, if you all of a sudden wear a thick sock, it's going to significantly throw off the feel of that loafer. Oh, totally. Yeah. So would you say like silk or cotton? Silk, Probably a thin wool. silk or cotton, even wool works. You know, there's a lot of really thin wool socks that can work really, really well. All right. Um, especially in the summertime, you want a thin sock. Okay. So another formal look we have here, and this may be my favorite look we're going to go through today, is what I like to call the summer soiree look. This is you're going to a cocktail party. Garden party. A garden party, maybe even a, a rehearsal dinner at a you know a destination wedding. Uh, we have a great pair of linen and silk brown pants, which is a very, I think, um, classic pant. Most guys will have some version of this. I mean, it's it's just soft. Like the silk gives yeah. the linen some softness, but you have this texture that's typically summery. Yeah. And if a guy doesn't have it, you can still wear a pair of chinos, right? Yes. But it's something to aspire to. Yes. It's yes. something to, to, to work for. Yes. Um, and so my, my thinking behind this outfit was um, keep the pants and the shirt very simple because we have a very, very strong jacket. Absolutely. Um, the navy with the dragon print uh, is not admittedly for a lot of guys, but for some guys, um, it is right up their alley. You can easily swap this out for a navy blazer, um, you know, a green jacket like you're wearing, 
um, or you know even a like a herringbone, a summer herringbone linen jacket. And you're jacket. a little bolder guy yourself, so you don't yeah. shy away from strong patterns. You have these yeah. Lily Pulitzer fabric and yes. green uh, suspenders, so it, it's a bit of a personality. If yeah. you like it more subdued, you can get a small checked summer blazer yeah. and uh, swap it out for this yeah. one. Yeah, and again, going back to our earlier point of the setting, you know, if it is a more formal summer event, maybe you should swap out a pattern jacket for a, a simple blazer. Um, in this look, uh, what we did, uh, we paired our navy blue suede tie loafer with this look. Um, one thing that I like to do for my style is to frame the pants. So we frame the pants on the bottom. Think of the frame as we have the navy blue mm -hmm. shoes. And then the top of the frame, we have the navy blue jacket. Very good. I mean, the general concept that you can apply to many outfits, yes. not just to this particular yeah. one. Yeah, and for a gentleman, it helps draw the eyes kind of up. Here we have another casual look, ideally for the summer. You, know, you have the shorts there, the long sleeve polo shirt, which is great. You know, at night, maybe it's a little chilly. Yeah. You can throw in a vest over top of this, like a, a fleece vest would look great. And I like the color combination. You know, it's not yeah. so bold. It's like the olive green with yeah. a tan and the like white. Like earth tones almost. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, I mean, green in general is one of the most underrated colors in menswear yeah so i'm glad to see that here yeah and, and olive green i think in particular is great because whether you're wearing these in the early fall um, or in the summer um, it will reflect the, the colors of nature um, and you also get kind of that classic you know military olive green which again you said is underused which i 100 percent agree with and it will flatter most guys complexions as well which i think is very useful yeah. how about a more formal look okay so this, uh, again, is another one of my favorites. Um, you don't see guys pairing loafers with tuxedos a lot, but in certain circles, you will see it a lot. I think of loafers, you know, you have your penny loafer, your driving shoe, your bit loafer. Some guys will even wear Belgian shoes uh, with a tuxedo. I think the bit loafer is maybe the most fitting of all those. It's, again, the most formal. And I think the, the flash of metal on the bit can complement whether it's your cufflinks or your studs very well. That's true. That's true. That's a good point. At the same time, you know, historically, people would wear like patent leather. They yeah. were Oxford, so court shoes. And unlike a, a loafer, which comes up a little higher, yeah. has a little like higher vamp, yeah. they used to have a, a much deeper cut. Yeah. Now, I think your loafers have a lower vamp. Right? Yeah. Tell us more about that. So, so that's a very good point, Raphael. Um, at Jay Butler, we have kind of two signatures to our style. Um, the first one is, as Raphael pointed out, it's a, a little shorter vamp. Gentlemen will call it a, a lower vamp. The vamp is the piece of leather that covers the top part of the foot. Um, on many shoes, you may see a vamp that covers two-thirds of the foot. For me personally, I think that covers too much of the foot. It throws off the balance of the foot and the balance of the shoe. So I shortened our vamp, you know, if you think of it as a ratio, I shortened our vamp to maybe cover about 40% of the, of the foot. Um, or, you know, 45% of the foot, which I think frames the foot much better. All right. Um, the other thing that is unique about our shoes is a very thin sole. Mm -hmm. um, and what comes with that is a slightly lower heel. Um, some loafers you'll see now have a very bulky uh, sole heels. and a very tall heel, which I think, again, going back to framing the foot and framing the pant, it throws off the ratio of, of the pants and the ankle and the foot. With a thinner sole, I mean, you get less cushioning. There's not space for cork at the same yeah. time it's super flexible it's super flexible you don't need to break them in a lot of guys you know out of the box they're comfortable awesome. um, to combat that's a very good point of, of not having the cork sole uh, to combat not having a lot of support we added a little arch support here and then unlike many shoes we have a full length insole um, so over time you know your foot will uh, kind of break in the shoe and it will um, the shoe itself will conform to your foot so it's very comfortable it's like uh your favorite pair of blue jeans or you know, your Goodyear welted dress shoes that Got you it. can tell your foot is the foot that is supposed to go in that shoe. Right. So, so back to this look, we, we paired the black bit loafer with the tuxedo. Um, I think it's a great look. It's not for everybody. It's a more casual look, but it's a kind of a subtle way to differentiate yourself from the rest of the guys in the crowd. Um, you know, the tuxedo is a tuxedo. You can change a couple of details on it, but there's only so far you should go. Yeah. So the shoe is a great way to, to change it up. So one thing that you have that's quite unusual, I think, is yeah. this perforated leather. Yes. And it's, you know, sometimes what happens is they perforate on the outside, but then the lining is solid. Yeah. Which, so the purpose is not really good. Yeah. With, with yours, you can actually see the lining as well as the top. They're, yeah. perf they're both perforated and, and they line up perfectly. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is, in the summer, probably my favorite shoe to wear. We make this shoe in the penny loafer and also the bit loafer. Um, and as you pointed out, a lot of brands will add a liner, which aesthetically you, you maintain the purpose of the perforations, but from a functional perspective, you lose them. So I, I like to tell my friends and customers that 
this perforated leather is almost like a leather mesh. On a day with a stiff breeze, you can actually feel the breeze come through the shoe. And if it's you know, a very humid day, like we get in Philadelphia where I'm yeah. at, or even if you're in Arizona and it's super dry, it can just you know, wick the moisture right off the foot, which is, is really nice. It's the equivalent of a fresco fabric. Yes, perfect. A fresco or, or linen fabric. And it, it really cannot be beat on, this, on the hottest of summer days. Even our style, a little more casual, a little more unusual. It's yeah. not quite like a classic yeah. penny loafer. It's uh, not quite a bit low. It's a little more adventurous, I like exactly. to say. Exactly. It looks almost like a boat shoe, kind of. Yeah. So it, this shoe is actually what started Jay Butler. Um, oh, seriously? I didn't yeah, know Yeah. So this is the first shoe that I designed. And the whole uh, kind of impetus behind Jay Butler was to make shoes for gentlemen uh, for under $200. Our shoes are priced at $195. But for under $200 where it was well-made, it was well-styled, and it was well-priced. A lot of brands will maybe hit one or two of those criteria, but not all three. The idea of this shoe was to have your driving loafer, which I love driving loafers, but I have often found that the nubs wear out too quickly, whether it's a $100 pair of driving shoes yeah. or a $500 pair of driving shoes. Very true. So I took the, you know, your, your sole, your leather sole, your leather heel mm. of a penny loafer and put it on the upper of the driving shoe. So you get the casual, kind of adventurous, playful look of the driving shoe, but the more substantial, more durable, more formal uh, feel uh, of you know, a, a penny loafer or a bit loafer. I mean, it's a, a little more structure still, like, because yeah. we have that more, like, general yeah. construction, but overall, that's yeah. the thought behind it. Yeah, and yeah. so it's, it's, it's very unique, especially in the American market. Um, it's a little more Italian, a little more um, kind of European in, in its look. So, so let's start here. We have a tweed jacket. I know you did a great article. Oh, on yeah, we have, we have a tweed guide. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Tweed guide, it's like video and, and both. Yeah, so. and it, you cover the history of tweed, how to wear tweed. And so here we... we took those principles in that guide and we were able to pair a tweed jacket with uh, burgundy chinos and the bit loafer. Um, you know, you could wear socks with this, you could wear it without socks. Um, Looks nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the point is that you can easily wear the loafers and the loafers will stand up to the heavier fabrics of the fall and the winter. Um, they're not going to be overshadowed by the heavier fabrics. Okay. So this look here is maybe our most fashionable look. Um, it's not a look that I would necessarily wear, but I think it's important to show guys that you can wear loafers with not just a suit, not just a tuxedo, not just shorts. You can break from that kind of preppy mold. You know, the, the loafers are kind of steeped in you know, Prep preppy style. and ivy style. Absolutely. Yeah, but the way they're worn these days, they're worn with everything. I mean, they're worn with, women will wear them with leggings, they'll wear them with a skirt, they'll wear them with jeans. Guys can wear them with pretty much anything and everything. So what we have here is a pair of uh, joggers, and I know you don't like to wear sweatpants. I don't wear a lot of them either. Um, it's a little too casual for me. Um, but some guys... It's a possibility. Yeah, it's a possibility, and it can actually be a really nice look. So we took a, a gray jogger with a, a white v-neck and a brown uh, motorcycle jacket and paired that with an olive green suede penny loafer. What we did here was we wanted to pair a, a bunch of kind of non-conventional items or maybe um, more adventurous items into one look, but still a look that is somewhat conservative and not too outlandish and not too, um, not too adventurous. Um, so I think the, the olive green suede really pairs well with the brown suede of the jacket. Um, you know, you have those earth tones and you have the neutral tones of, of the gray pants in between. <laughs>